Now, my next question is, um, from your perspective, why is uh, black history even important? Because a lot of people will ask that, like, you know, why should I invest my time in studying black history as a black person? What would this do for me? Yeah, uh, I can totally relate to that. Uh, I remember growing up with my father trying to tell me how important history is and knowing your black history, knowing history in general. Uh, so you have an understanding of the record of what's transpired over the plant on the planet. Um, but I was re I was against it. I was like, it's over with. We're moving forward. You know, just that all that type of uh, narrow mindset. But it's really just getting a foundation on what has happened before you. Right. And these what had what. What type of situation have you, are you walking into, right? Um, they say you should never speak on a, situ, on a situation until you understand how it came to be, right? So you, we can jump into conversations about, you know, ADOS. We can have conversations about um, voting rights and all of this stuff. But how did this whole situation come to be? And if you fully have a, a good picture of that, then you can start to interact and move and navigate the situation and the environment much better. So I think that this is really what history does. It gives perspective. Um, you get perspective on the situation and you can really see what you're dealing with. And I think you can make better decisions moving forward. Uh, that's just like on a perspective tip, but uh, internally it changes you. You know, when you find out that the contributions that black people have done to this planet for tens of thousands of years, then you wonder, why is the conversation only about slavery and what has transpired after that? Like there seems to be more to the story that's not being told. Um, so I think that it fills in a lot of gaps. I think it's the, I think black history is the greatest motivational story never told. And I think that we need to use that story in order to inspire and motivate our children. Uh, they're disconnected from a lot of things because we are allowing the narrative to say, you are nothing but enslaved. You are nothing but a dominated people. And here's you risen to the height of humanity now that Barack Obama is the president of the United States. This is so amazing. But is it? Because when you go back before colonization, you find out that your people have always ran empires. They have always contributed much to success. Yeah. No disrespect to Brother Obama. He did his, he done, he's doing his thing, right? But that this is the norm. Black excellence is the norm. Uh, in our co in our people and our, on this planet, uh, and it's being written out of history, right? Black Black history is world history, right? It's actually the missing pages of world history. And so, on the third level, I believe that it's important, particularly, to write Black history into the pages of world history. But for what it does for other people to start to understand and respect our contributions to humanity. I think that's a missing piece as well, because all they're told right now is, you know, we pimp, pimps, thugs, rappers and entertainers uh, that really don't provide anything outside of some cultural entertainment and fun to the planet when, you know, that's just a bold faced lie. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. I can say for myself, it's very empowering. It does something for your self-esteem, your self-confidence. And I think a lot of our uh, people need that at an early age. Unfortunately, we get into it later on after we've been through a lot of, you know, um, compromising situations where we don't really uh, view ourselves or people that look like us in a high regard, you know. But if we started off with that, like with the flashcards, if you give it to them when they're five and six and seven years old, then they'll walk through the world a little bit differently, yeah. you know, just from my I, perspective. I think you really hit on it because, uh, you know, there's like a lot of studies and researches and, and the world lives it, right? I was listening to a couple of your podcasts anyway, and you were talking about how other ethnicities, other cultures come over here and they really have a sense of culture, right? And they feel like it's so important that they don't even start Saturday schools just to talk their language, just to eat their foods, just to have the conversations around culture. Because it connects you to your community and what it does for the esteem of the child. Like you really hit on it. And I think self-confidence and self-esteem is the most important trait that children can pick up. Hey, I love the... I love the fact that they need to know how to add and subtract and multiply and divide and all of that good stuff. But really, the basis of education comes from confidence, because if you have the confidence and this intestinal fortitude to teach and educate yourself, you can learn for a lifetime and it, it, and you will fight through over around and through obstacles that get in your face. But if you don't have never have any self-confidence in the first place, you, you know, I mean, you give up easily. And that's really what our children are 
experiencing as we grow because we've just been demoralized about who we are. We're not proud of what we see in the mirror. We're not proud of our family members around us because we don't think that they've contributed much to humanity. Uh, and turns out we did. We have. Okay. Okay. Now you had mentioned earlier that um, you working with some of the schools. Have you um, actually got a chance to interact with any other children or even the parents? Have you got, have you gotten any feedback yet as to, you know what? Urban oh, yeah. 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 A um, couple of schools we're in, they're loving the program. The children are embracing the programs. One of our uh, curriculums is called the Black Math Genius Program uh, Bootcamp, Black Math Genius Bootcamp. You can check it out, blackmathgenius.com. Uh, but that program and the, the, the sister that leads it, uh, Sada Moore, is dynamic, is fascinating, but it's a mathematics program, but it's based on history. So in, in we, we just start weaving the truth into the children at an early age. Instead of telling them that the Greeks discovered mathematics on the planet, we, we tell the truth, right? <laughs> we, we go back, right? We talk about the pyramids in Giza being built on the Pythagoras theorem, but it's built thousands of years before Pythagoras was born. So it's like, how is this the Pythagoras theorem if, the, if these uh, set of uh, mathematical um, Equations was thoroughly understood for thousands of years before his birth. Why? Why are we telling our children that the Greeks are behind mathematics? What? What would little boys and little girls um, type of self confidence would they have about mathematics if they knew that it came from their cultures, that it came from their communities, that people that look like them really excel in the areas of mathematics and they have for thousands of years? Uh, those that just does something for you internally. And it lets them know that it's possible and that they can do it as well. So I would think that that is mission critical uh, to the advancement of our future. Um, all of these STEAM deficiencies, let's call it, in our community, right? We don't, we don't got enough STEAM jobs. We got to push it. But we don't got it because at an early age, children are becoming uninterested in mathematics. They're feeling like they can't do it. So we really want to speak to that self-confidence piece and show them that not only that they can do it, they've done it for thousands of years and they're more than capable of it moving forward. Man, that's major. I mean, I think that the majority of the children, you know, the black children will have a totally different perspective on things like mathematics and science. If they knew that we created that, that we started that, but I would yeah. say most of them don't know that and they may never know that for, throughout their lifetime. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, some but may it, pick up on it later. It's like, so it's a, I mean, this is a fact that we know now as an adult, but then we still allow in the school system and people to misinform our children. Like, so we try to challenge uh, the adults, the grandmothers, the grandfathers, the uncles, the mentors in the community to just start telling the truth to the babies. Right. Tell them the truth at an early age and allow them to grow up in that self-confidence and understanding. They just kind of see the trajectory of their lives change. So we just want to encourage people to push back on the system that's trying to erode the minds of your children. They're not even trying, right? They're actually doing a great job uh, at it. Uh, but we are complicit in that, and we, we need to wake up and stop it. Right, definitely. I mean, we got to take accountability. It's a quote. Frederick Douglass said, um, um, I hope I can say it right. He says, it's easier to build strong children than it is to repair broken men. So a lot of the elders, even our parents, or even people our age, you know what I'm saying? They <laughs> kind of stuck in their ways, but you doing you definitely you know doing some phenomenal work by connecting with the school children for sure. Yes, sir.